I talked to Arch Woodstock, that funny looking guy in the back there with a good looking wife. Earlier in the week, yeah, earlier in the week, and he said that he might be with us. So last night I was so tired, I, I could hardly, I didn't know if I was going to be able to get up this morning, but I was up at six o'clock, but I wasn't moving very fast, I'll tell you. And so I called him last night and I said, Arch, I don't know if you're going to be there, bring a sermon, because I'm not sure I'm up to it. Well, I am, but Arch is here, and I want to hear him. I was there at his ordination, and I want to see if he's learned anything since. <laughs> so Arch Woodstock from, from Benton Harbor, the Big Calvary Bible Church on Territorial Road. Will you come, please? Oh, you can have as much time as you want. We leave at 12 to go to the restaurant to beat the, <laughs> so that we can beat the Methodists there. Uh, two men have uh, been influential in my life, earthly men, in the last few years. I met one of them. I think you probably know him, Paul Deal. I met Paul when I was seven years old. He was one of my counselors when I was at uh, Good, Good New, uh, Christian Youth Training Camp at uh, Gull Lake. And then I had the privilege of meeting John just a couple years ago. Well, well let, me, <laughs> let, let me get there, John. I didn't know and uh, there have been times when, uh, you know, th how things go, and I would make that telephone call, and he would pick up at the other end, can we meet? And he said, yeah, meet you in Pawpaw. And we'd meet in Pawpaw, and he would, we would go over some things, and uh, had a wonderful time, and uh, enjoy, enjoy his friendship and fellowship. And uh, so uh, just uh, a little bit. My wife is here with me. Sandy, would you stand up? We've only been married for 48 years, so it's, uh, we're getting to know each other, and... Uh, and so uh, we're glad that she's here, and we have a, a bunch of kids. We have a whole bunch. You know, we have three children, but we've got grandchildren. Like, you just like the, like the sands of the sea. I can't, I, every time I think I have them counted, somebody has another one. Or they adopt someone. We've got nine, and my daughter has nine, and my, well, they're all over. But we have many, and so, but you know, 20 years ago, no, what, 93 or 94, we lived right over off Coon Hollow Road. And our son was attending uh, Three Rivers High School at the time. And uh, then God took us south, and uh, we like that. We were in Florida for quite a while, for a while, and some other states. But what really has impressed me about, and something I want to share with you before I get into the Word of God, is that God has never made a mistake in directing my life. I have made many, on the other hand, but God has always said, "You know what, Arch? Come here. Come here." And so uh, as I stand before you today, I'm one of those guys that I've got those things that have happened in my life that uh, were mistakes, things that I did that were outside the will of God. There was a time in my life when uh, I was a youth pastor in Kalamazoo Bible Church. Whoa, man, I was cool. And I had 40 kids in my group, and I had a, one time I had 800 kids come for a rally. And you know what? Arch Woodstock was doing it all, and the Lord was not allowed in. And he quickly taught, taught me that lesson. And there are other times, but I want to let you know today that I'm just so happy that I can be here knowing I'm here today because that's what God ordained. You know, I, I'm, I, and I've been praying so hard for John and for Mary, as you all have too. And so I, the, when, I, when he called me and told me what his plans were, you know, I just got down. I cried. I love him. And again, I, I don't know him that well. Maybe I shouldn't love him, but I, I do, you know. No, I, I do. I know you folks do too. And so when you heard that news, that was a problem. Well, you know, Pastor. As we think about that, would you open your Bibles to Mark, the Gospel of Mark? And uh, we're, we're, we're done at 12? Are you kidding me? We'll be done at about 2.30 if everything goes well. <laughs> Uh, and in Mark chapter 4 is where we're going to be. You know, Jesus has been teaching and he's been busy. And, and he, uh, I think he, this portion of the scripture is designed a lot for pastors. 
because sometimes we do things and when we get a call and like John was saying, then the, you, well, you got to go to the hospital and then there's something else that pops up. And, and like your life, our life is full of those things that we're not certain when they happened or why they happened. And Jesus knew those things and he was teaching. <laughs> he was in, and uh, he was talking to, to, to the folks. And, and uh, as I want to read here, huh, I want to read verse, start in verse 36. And we're just going to read through the end of the, cha- end of the chapter there. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he, as he was into the ship. And they were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind and the, we- we- the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they awakened him and they said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And they said on, and, he, and he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this, this small portion of your word. Lord, that has such a great truth for us. Be with uh, us this morning as we look at it. As we just take a few moments, Father, and, and see what you may have had prepared for us this morning. Lord, we thank you for this body of believers. And we pray that you are, even now, you have begun to work in the hearts of, of the ones that are here and the ones that will be here. And Lord, we pray that this time that, uh, that the pastor has, that you will give him this, the peace of Jesus Christ and all that he does. In his name we pray, amen. Now, there are many of us, <clears throat> that at times when we've been walking through life and you get that tap on the shoulder and you go, what? Oh, what, what was that? You know, well, I wasn't expecting that. Many of you probably like me about five years ago or so, I got that tap on the shoulder from a doctor that says, you've got cancer. I said, no, no, not me. No, I know a lot of other people that have cancer, but you know, probably not me. Yeah, had cancer. You know, and that, that was one of those things that surprised me. Oh, whoa, whoa. And, and then the, all the things that happened. We were sitting at our, in our home in Florida. I had the best. Oh, if any of you ever aspire, young men, to be a pastor, I'll tell you the best pastorate you can have besides this church. I know John told me this is the best. But I was the pastor of the Korean, um, the English-speaking pastor of the Korean American Baptist Church of Fort Myers, Florida. Now, let, think about that for a second, will you? Palm trees, you know, 82 in January, you know, pools, always nice, you know. Congregation, they couldn't get enough of the Word of God. They kept saying, Pastor. We had Pastor Lee, wonderful Korean man, and he spoke very little English. He had the first generation Koreans in their building. And I had the second and third generation, and they would come to me, and, Pastor, can you give us more of the Word of God? Can we study this? Can we study that? Oh, yes, we can. I loved it. You know, we got a telephone call from Michigan, our daughter, being diagnosed with cancer. Oh, man, seven children. Sandy left just as quick as we could get her on a plane and get her up here or whatever, however we did that. I was finishing up my treatment, and, uh, and uh, then, I, then I came up, and we got a little apartment over in Kalamazoo, and then God did some other work. But, you know, there are times in our life when things happen that we just aren't ready for. We're not expecting them. Let's look at the disciples, shall we, in this, in this passage in Mark. Those disciples, I love them. I, I, I am Peter. I'm sorry. Oh, man, I get impetuous sometimes. I try to run ahead of the Lord. You know, I know none of you do that. You're all like John, aren't you? John the, John the disciple, not John the pastor. But uh, he just laid on Jesus. You know, remember at the, at the Last Supper, oh, Father, he's laid on, on the Lord's shoulders, there, reposed there, having the Last Supper. And, uh, you know, and, and when the disciples were saying, Who's going to be the greatest? He didn't say anything, but he was thinking, <laughs> I love him the best, you know. Like those of you that have kids, you know, you always say, which one do you, no favorites. But, you know, we had the disciples, they're people just like we were. So when they had been working all day long and they'd, they'd, uh, Jesus had been telling about, you know, the, the parables that he'd been given. And they get into the boat and they're, and they're tired. And, oh boy, let's go. Let's get away from all of this. And they did. And they, and they, verse 36 says, and when they had, had sent away the multitude, they took him, they're talking about Jesus, and 
as he was, and he went into the ship, and they were also with them other ships. So they went out onto the sea, and they've got the ships, and boy, those of you that are fishermen, or you know, those of you that have boats and like the boating thing, it's cool. You know, you get out on the water, and they're, they're probably out on the water, and they hosted the little sail. I've, I've got a really nice uh, DVD of the Gaithers did of, uh, in, in Jerusalem, and they're out on the Sea of Galilee. And it's gorgeous. Oh, and they've got the little ship that they said is probably the type that Jesus was on. And, this, you know, they put up the mast and the sail, little sail. And then, oh, what a neat, you know, and the disciples are probably thinking, oh, great. <laughs> this is so nice. We got away from all of the work that we were doing. And it's just calm. And, and we're, we're out here. And, uh, <laughs> oh, no, verse 37. There's always a verse 37, isn't there? You know, I don't know, you, always in your life you'll be doing something, and then verse 37 comes along. And verse 37 says, and there arose a great storm of wind. And I don't know what your great storm of wind is, but we all have them. You know, from one day to the next, they may be littler storms, just little puffs, and some of them might be great storms, but we all have Mark 4, 37 in our life. You will, won't you? And until Jesus comes again, that we're going to have those. And it says, And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was full. And you've been there too, haven't you? I can see some people, yeah, I've been there. My ship is full, Pastor. What can I, you know, I, I think I'm going to go down. Well, you probably would. No, no, we got to read more, don't we? I forgot. I was going to end now because it was really close to 12. But uh, I, th I think I should probably go on a couple more points. And he, we're talking about Jesus, was in the back part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. Oh. That just tells me so much about my Lord. He is never, never shocked, never, never startled, never taken unaware. He knew what was going to happen. You know what, before, I've been, preach, I've been preaching and I've been teaching, I'm going to... I'm going to go back here. On a, I love the way that Mark puts that. He was even on a pillow. I mean, there's no better. I, I, we were watching the commercials the other night for the magic pillow. You seen that one? The best pillow ever made in the world. And I, wow, Sandy, I want one of those. And she said, they look neat. Let's get two. And I went on there. They're $100. I said, I like the pillow I have right now on my bed. You know, and, uh, and I have it. And, but a pillow is so cool. Because a pillow, you, 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 you mold it, you know, to your head, you can turn it around. You turn it over in the hot, it's cool. I don't know how it does that. But you're, you, in the hot weather, you turn that pillow over, whoa, it's cool on this side. And, you know, there is Jesus in the back of the boat on a pillow. And he is, you know, he's sleeping. He's not, he's, he's sleeping, he's sound asleep. Now, the sound of sleep that Jesus was was not the deaf ear that was turned to the situation that was going on. What was he doing? He was waiting for the disciples to say what? We need you. Lord, we need you. It says here, as we go down, he says, uh, Master, don't you care that we perish? What had Jesus done that would make anybody think that he didn't care? Not a thing. But I've said, I've said that to the Lord. I, I, my, our son one time was in an accident, a very severe accident, a brain trauma situation. And, and he was in, the, in, in Bronson Hospital or Borges Hospital, Borges Hospital, I believe. And he was in the Neo Intensive Care Unit. And he was a 13-year-old boy that went back into the fetal position like he was in his mother's womb because of the damage that had been done to his brain, and he began to grow out, you know. And I said that to the Lord, to my shame. Father, don't you, don't you care about my family? Don't you care about my son? You know, he's in, he's in a war. You know, you know where, my, where my son is? Jesus said, well, of course I do. Of course I do. And when those disciples came up and, and, they, and, they went, and they went to the back of the boat, they said, Jesus, don't you, don't you care what's going on? Don't you care about us? You chose us. Ooh, they didn't think, did they? They didn't even stop to think. He chose us one at a time. I saw you under the tree. Are you fishermen? Follow me. Oh, Dr. Luke, come here. Come, come, come with me. He did that. And still they were saying, they used that sentence that, oh, 
Master, carest thou not that we perish? And Jesus arose and he rebuked the wind and he said unto the sea, Peace be still. You know, a lot of times we hear sermons that dwell on those, that part of, this, of what happened. And that's good because we know that Jesus is what? The master of all. Now, he was in the beginning with God in John, John 1 1. He was there at creation, he was part of it, he did it. So when he got up and, he, and his disciples are saying, oh, they're crying, you know, and Lord, can you do this? And he's, hey, guys, wind, knock it off. See? <laughs> just, will you get glassy again for me just for a little bit, see? You know, not like there would never be another storm, was it? There were other storms on that sea. But for that moment, for that time, for the disciples, for right then, Jesus calmed the sea. Oh. Verse 40, and he said unto them, how many times has Jesus, I hope Jesus hasn't said this to you as many times as he has to me. Why are you so happy that I'm here? No, no, I'm, I read that wrong, didn't I? Let me go back and see it again. Oh, why are you so fearful? Didn't you watch the weather radar on your iPhone, he said to them? No, he didn't say that either. He just said, why are you fearful? What, what's, and if we were to say that today, we'd say, what's with you? What, what, what's going on? I'm right here. Do, do you see me? You know, they had that advantage. I'll give them that. Okay, they, they could see Jesus. But we find ourselves many times. Oh, I, I do. And some of the times when I called John, it was because of that. I was in a situation where I, I didn't like. And there were people that were doing things that I didn't, any long story short, I didn't like it. And I was fearful, and I called John. I prayed too, but after I had my time with John, you know what I would do? I would say, Lord, thank you for men with wisdom. John uh, Hill and uh, Paul Deal and some other men that threw a, a part, a real rough spot in my ministry were there. You know, but most of all, thank you for you. You never left me, did you, Lord? The Lord never left that boat. He never, he was down there on that pillow all that time. And he comes out, why were you fearful then? Why were you fearful? Well, we're not going to go in. We know later on what happened in Acts and how they became strong. But the other part was, how is it that you have just a little bit of faith? Now I said, why is it that you have no faith? Boy, the Lord doesn't, he didn't, didn't uh, hold back at all, did he? Why is it you have no faith? I mean, he could have went to us to him and said, you know what, you guys didn't show, you showed very little faith here. Let me, give me, a little, let me give you a little lesson on faith. No, he didn't say, he looked at him right in the eye. And some of you, I can tell by the way you're looking, you've had that experience when Jesus has looked you in the eye like he has me many times and said, what's wrong, Arch? Where's your faith? You don't show any. And I have to get on my knees and say, boy, Father, I'm sorry. I am sorry. I don't. And I was, uh, well, just a couple weeks ago in my office, a situation like this came up, and I have found that uh, I can pray at my desk because I have a really nice soft chair. I do. It's kind of broken. It kind of tilts frontwards, but it's okay. It's, it's, but it's soft and it's nice. And I, can, I can lay on my desk, and I can pray, and my mind will begin to wander like you wouldn't believe. You know, But I found out that when I get down on the floor, that hard floor in my office, on my knees, you know who has my attention? God knows attention. I, I, I put all of my attention to him. So that a few weeks ago when I got down on my knees and I began to say, I think what the disciples probably said to our Lord soon after this, Father, forgive me. I was saying this for the lack of faith that I had in this particular area of my life. And he said to me, he said, well, he said, I'm going to have to kick you out of the ministry. I don't love you anymore. No, he didn't either. He put his arms around me. He put his arms around me and he said, Arch, you know I love you. You know, I'm, I was just here on my pillow waiting for you to call me. I wanted to be involved in that. Jesus, if the disciples, would, when the storm had started, this is just me, this is not in the Bible. Sometimes I do this, but bear with me just for a moment. If the disciples had said, oh, hey, Jesus, there's a, there's a storm coming, you know what he would have done? He would have gotten up, got up and been with them. 
Because he comes the moment we call him. There's never a time when you pray for the Lord to be with you when he says, tomorrow I'll be around. Not going to be with you today, tomorrow. And if they would have said, hey, Jesus, the storm's coming up. He would have come up and said, oh, Peter, look at that. Look at that horizon. It's going to be a big one. It is. Yeah, you know what we should do? And he would, and they said, what is it, Lord? And he would direct, maybe would have directed them. That's, again, that's just me. That's not, you don't find that in Mark. So in conclusion today, because, man, two minutes, no, a little after 12, okay. <clears throat> you folks are going through something that's a storm. Any time a church needs to find someone else to be here, someone else to have that staff so that they can be the shepherd, someone else that the Lord has given them an opportunity to study the Word of God, to prepare their hearts, to give you the message that Jesus Christ would have for you, that's a storm. And don't think it's not. And it's a storm for, for Pastor Hill and for what he's going through. And so what we need to do is remember two things, and they are very simple. Jesus is only sleeping on a pillow as long as you allow him to. And I know I can tell that you're saying, Pastor, we're, we're praying. You are. You've already said, Lord, you know, this is the storm. You know what's going to happen? The storm's going to cease. The storm is going to cease. Maybe not be tomorrow, maybe not. But the Lord is in control. And as long as you've asked him to come up. And be on, on deck with you through the storm. Guess what? It'll, it'll work out. It'll go. And as you look daily in, in your individual prayer, in your, in your communal prayers, and as you're getting together, and, and as you remember what the Lord said to them, why are you so fearful? You can say, Lord, I'm not fearful. I'm not fearful because, you know what? What did you tell me, Father? You said something about, oh, I am with you even until the end of the world? which may be soon, we hope, you know, but he, and you know, I'm, I, in, in John 14, you know, all of those, you know, I'm not fearful now, Lord. And, and uh, then it says, uh, how is it that you have no faith? And you can look and you say, you know, the Lord's not going to say that to us as a body of believers. The Lord is going to look at this body of believers and say, Wow, well done, my group of good and faithful servants. You prayed it through. You sought my will. You looked high and low for the man that Jesus Christ would have stand here in front of you. When we, individually or as a group, go to our knees, any storm, Jesus gets up. He's not on a pillow. He stands there with us. I like the picture. Don't you have the, of the storm and the, and the helm and the, 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 there at the pilot's wheel of the big ship and there's a man trying to navigate it and there's Jesus with his hand on his shoulder. Envision yourselves on that ship beginning the storm with the greatest co-pilot in the world standing on your shoulder saying, this is the navigation that we need to take. This is the course that I want you to be on. And you say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes. Do you have a song for, for closing? Is that correct? You have a song pastor does? I never, ever do, ever leave a pulpit without doing this. And as John comes, I'll do this because I don't know you. And I know that Pastor John does. And there may be some of you here today that are here without the knowledge of Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And it would be so remiss of me if I didn't tell you this morning that if there's anyone here that has, and you're saying, what are you talking about? I'm not sure what this relationship with Jesus is all about. That's why God <laughs> called me into the ministry, so that I could be there when Jesus seeks. Luke 19.10, Jesus is the one that seeks and saves those that are lost. But we're here to show some of the things that God would have for you from his word that would you, lead you to Jesus. So if there's anyone here this morning that has not that knowledge of Christ, just talk to the pastor, talk to myself, probably many others in this congregation, and uh, you can uh, have that uh, wonderful, wonderful joy of walking with Jesus daily. Pastor? Thank you, sir. Would you take